There's a phrase in one of Shakespeare's plays. It's in Julius Caesar. It says, there's a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the floods leads on to fortune. fortune. I don't remember the first time I had a patty, but I do remember the aroma I would get when I went into my parents' bakery in Jamaica. The aroma, of course, gives you one of comfort, joy. You look forward to your stomach being very happy. My name is Michael Davidson. In terms of profession, I'm a baker. I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. I came to Canada when I was 14 years old. My parents started a bakery in Kensington Market when we came, and that was called Kensington Patty Palace. I think a patty represents many things for Jamaicans. It's something that's part of our traditional fare. Most school children exist on it because a patty and a cocoa bread is something that we'll generally eat at lunchtime. It's affordable. Welcome to Kensington Patty Palace. What can I get for you two today? Give me two patty and two cocoa bread. Anything to drink? Two cola champagne. Okay, three dollars, please. You get one patty and one gingerbread. All right, dollar twenty, please. So patties have always enjoyed a place of prominence, as does most food in Jamaica. You know, food's very important to us. Have a nice day. Enjoy. Thanks. All right, have a good day. Ooh. In February of 1995, we had a visit from an inspector with Consumer and Corporate Affairs. Welcome to Kensington Patty Palace. What can I get for you today? My name is Shirlene Kalinsky. I'm a food inspector with the federal government's Department of Consumer and Corporate Affairs. I'm looking for the owners of this establishment, A. Raymond or Pat Davidson. Are they in today? No, they're away, but I'm in charge. May I ask what this is pertaining? May I ask your name, sir? My name is Michael Davidson. I'm their son and the manager. Well, Mr. Davidson, it has come to our attention that this establishment, among many other establishments in Toronto, are illegally selling a product under the name Patty. The purpose of our visit was to let us know that the name of the product, the patty, needed to be changed. I am issuing you an official notice of the violation. Back in the 80s, we didn't really call it a Jamaican patty. We just called it a patty. Come again? According to the Federal Meat Inspection Act, as stated right here, a patty is only defined as shaped lean beef, ground or boneless, and may contain seasonings, but no other ingredients, including flour or any other fillers, are permitted to be added to a food item under that labeling. You're talking a hamburger. Precisely. She said that there would be confusion because our patty did not meet that criteria because our patty was meat enrobed in pastry. As we can see here, these so-called patties are encrusted in pastry and contain other ingredients, thus not meeting the standard for what the Canadian law classifies as a patty. But these are patties and have been patties for centuries. Perhaps. And that may be the case back home, but not here in Canada. And as long as you want to sell here in Canada, you will have to rename the product. Any labels, signage, packaging, advertising will have to be changed in order to avoid any confusion. And therefore, we shouldn't be calling a Jamaican patty a patty. Um, we should give it another name. So I said, well, that's going to be a little bit awkward. The name of the place is Kensington Patty Palace. What do you suggest we change the name to? Oh, perhaps you could call it a turnover or a Caribbean meat pocket or whatever else you like, as long as it meets federal regulations. Kensington Pocket Palace, Kensington Turnover Palace. You know, it doesn't quite have the same ring to it, so I don't think we want to do that. Mr. Davidson, if you do not comply, Consumer and Corporate Affairs will fine this establishment $5,000. You have three months to make the changes. In terms of the plates to redo the packaging, the re-registration of the business, all the adjacent cost, it would have cost us maybe $10,000. But our greater loss would have been the goodwill of the name that had been established in the community. Beef patty is a term that's defined under the Meat Inspection Act, administered by Agriculture Canada, and it puts very definite limitations or uh, restrictions on what a beef patty can be made from and what it must uh, contain. The unnecessary burden that we were being placed under would have brought the business to a premature end. The challenge, I think, really, is um, sometimes it's what they now refer to as um, 
institutionalized racism. And at that time, that may have been what it was. We didn't have that phrase for it at that time. I was talking to somebody about it, and I said, you know, really, this is a bit silly. Why you not call the media and get on the news so everybody can say it's a foolishness? Colin Vaughan used to come into the store all the time, so we mentioned it to him, and he said, you know, this is really a bit of a joke. And so, the inspector told me that we would be fined if we did not change the name of our party, because according to some regulations, we cannot call our party that because it's a meat enrobed in pastry. And what was going through your mind when the inspector told you that and issued you with a notice? Well, everybody knows what a party is. You think that goes in the middle of a hamburger? Only recently have I heard it referred to as a, as a beef party. I think it's a waste of money, waste of taxpayers' time, that's all. We'll be following the story more as it develops. Rosie DeMano saw that and she wrote an article about it in the Toronto Star, and from there, even the Toronto Sun picked it up. And we had all sorts of community uproar and all sorts of thoughts going on. And the phone at the bakery didn't stop ringing. Hello, Michael Davidson speaking. You don't stop, you keep fighting, don't put up with that. Make sure you fight it, we're not going to go along with that. All right, thank you for your support. Well, everybody called with a theory, right? And um, some of the popular theories was, you know, you're selling too many parties, you're doing too well. You know, I bet you're McDonald's behind this. Them see you sell off all kind of party and walk them, shut you down. Well, we'll definitely be fighting this, but I don't think it's McDonald's behind it. Then I'm off Burger King. Well, don't you say at them place they look for shut down the Jamaica party? Sure. Well, I doubt it's either of them, but... We appreciate the support. And one guy called me and said, your family is from Hopewell in Hanover. I know your grandfather. <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to be rid of phone calls. <laughs> Thank you. Come again. Inspector. The inspector came back and wanted to know where we had progressed in terms of making the changes to the name. I said, you know, we're not progressing too far in the name change front. We are progressing very far in the resistance front. So I don't think we're going to be changing the name. But we'll get back to you about that. Look, Mr. Davidson, we really don't want to issue any fines. But we will be forced to if you continue to disregard the regulation. Hmm. 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 In our time in business, we've never found a customer having any doubt as to what a Jamaican patty is. It's ridiculous. Toronto's becoming a lot more cosmopolitan and people wanted you to know that they knew what a patty was and that they were willing to support you in your fight with the government to keep the name patty. Nobody is really quite sure how the patty controversy is going to be resolved. The owner of this store says he's going to go to Ottawa and patty parliament. Meanwhile, his patties are selling like hotcakes. Hotcakes? I wonder if I just broke another law. The timing was fortuitous in that Brian Mulroney had a commitment to go to this conference, which was in Jamaica. Mulroney's government, getting wind of what was happening, didn't want to have a big fuss when he got to Jamaica over the name of the patty. The Jamaican consul got involved because people would call him and say, oh, this part of our heritage is being destroyed. Mm, yes, yes, I understand your concern. The office contacted Lloyd Perry, who used to be the Guardian of Ontario. Lloyd was a big community service fellow, did a lot of work in our community, very generous man. The community is outraged, Lloyd. People are calling me non-stop. The government in Jamaica, the people in Jamaica, they're all wondering what is going on. It is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. Well, look, the patty's in good hands. Don't worry, Aussie. I'll be happy to look after the legal interests of the patty. Lloyd came to see me. Consul General Murray asked me to get involved and provide aid in all legal matters, so you can consider me the patty guardian. <laughs> well, that's excellent, but what do we do next? He said, Michael, Prime Minister Maroon is concerned because he's going to Jamaica. He doesn't want a big furrow when he gets down there over the name of the patty. So I'm going to organize a meeting, including all the patty vendors and yourself as well, with the higher-ups of consumer and corporate affairs. And come to some sort of resolution prior to Mulroney leaving for Jamaica. I said, well, I can't really speak on behalf of all the patty manufacturers, but um, I'll be happy to call him and get some sort of consensus. Good, great. You do that and get back to me. In the meantime, I'll take two turnovers. We don't serve turnovers here, <laughs> and we never will. I called all the patty manufacturers. Hello, Patty King. Hello, this is Golden Patty. Hello, Alan. Hello, Randy's. Yes, we're setting up a meeting about the patty and keeping its name. 
and I was just looking to see if you would like to join the meeting. And they said to me, Michael, you're doing a good job. You continue. We're behind you. OK, thank you. After the publicity had come out in the newspaper, David Peterson came down to the store. He was invited to come down by his PR manager, I think it was a publicity guy, because there's a photo op down here. So he brought David down to the market. David came in and he bought patties for his entourage that came with him. Some bureaucrat's gone wild up there and is trying to change the whole uh, cultural makeup of this, uh, of this particular uh, culinary phenomenon uh, to conform with some regulation. That doesn't make any sense. Mr. Peterson, what would you say to those who claim you're pandering to the Jamaican community? I can assure you, I'm not pandering to anyone. And I intend to take up this cause with the appropriate federal minister. There's got to be at least one sane person in the government in Ottawa, and we'll ferret that person out. Mm. Sir, can you please get one for all these people here right away? We gain more publicity again from the visit of David Peterson. While this was going on, my parents are vacationing in Jamaica. They opened the Sunday Gleaner one Sunday, and it says on the top, <gasps> headline, Canada bans patty. Kensington Patty Palace's Michael Davidson, and <gasps> all of a sudden, they're in shock. So my phone starts to ring at work. Hello, Kensington Patty Palace, Michael Davidson speaking. What are you doing? We leave you there for a few weeks to look after the business? No, it's out of front page news in, in Jamaica. What's going on? Wait, the news we told there already? Of course, it says Canada Buns Patty. What's happening? I said, well, they came in and told us that they wanted us to change the name of the patty. And I said, well, this is ridiculous. We're not looking for it with the government. What? Yeah, I'm going to know who are Kazi or who are Kazi, but they sent somebody for consumer and corporate affairs and she had talked about they need to change the name of the product and the business. Canadian government always stopping on the little man. And that may I tell you. They said, well, you're getting a lot of support here in Jamaica as well. So good for you. Good luck and keep going. Yes, Mumi. All right, Michael, we'll be monitoring the situation from here. The meeting held with Consumer and Corporate Affairs was often referred to as the Patty Summit. Mr. Thatcher, Mr. Paul, Ms. Kalinsky, I've called you here on behalf of the Jamaican community, hoping that common sense can override what is an outdated regulation and we can come to a sensible resolution. So at the meeting, they also had the inspector who had started the initial drama, and I think the inspector's boss, and maybe one or two other people. Well, Mr. Perry, while I can appreciate your assistance in this matter, the fact is regulations are set to be followed into the highest standard. If we don't, the entire system will fail. I believe that may be an over-exaggeration to say the whole system will fall down over the patty. Well, Mr. Perry, as a help to the affected businesses, we will allow them to use the remaining boxes and packaging beyond the three-month grace period. Well, I don't think that's going to be very helpful, Ms. Thatcher. Hmm. I also propose some suggested new names. I do know uh, quite a few of the names that were suggested, a lot of them being totally impractical. I understand Ms. Kalinsky has proposed turnover, mm. Caribbean meat pocket. Um, you could use handheld pocket or Caribbean pie. Mm. No. No? In some cases, puff pastry items or crescent items, which really didn't apply to what we were doing. They tried to find a solution for something that was amicable or, I guess, palatable for them, which they thought we would accept. How about ground beef pastry? Absolutely not. Those names would never be accepted in the community at all. We should be clear that we're not dictating that you have to use any of these names we are open to suggestions to alternative names that you may have. The only suggestion is for the... If, 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 if I may. Please, Michael. The party to us is a part of our heritage. It's a part of... Who we are, and it's part of our fear. So it's like asking us to change ackee and saltfish to fruit and fish. Or, or calling the, um, uh, the, the poutine fries with sauce and cheese bits. Or even calling a donut a sugar circle. So I think as we come here, we contribute something to society. We are contributing something within our party, and we want to maintain that uniqueness in what we are doing, what we have brought, and what we feel that we can add. You make a very compelling case. What if we just call it a Jamaican patty? Specifies and differentiates their patty from a regular patty? Hmm. You may have a point. Seems like the simplest solution here, right? I think it's a fantastic idea. It's a great solution. I think the community will be very satisfied to hear about this. So that's settled. 
From this day forth, your patty shall be known as the Jamaican patty. There'll be no need to change the name of your business or any others with the name patty. All right. Congratulations, Michael. Yes. We did it. So that was the compromise that we came up with. And that's how we managed to keep the name. And it became a Jamaican patty as opposed to just a patty. So no hard feelings, I hope. I was just doing my job. So was I. Hmm. Hmm. It may be indicative of a problem within the society, and it may be representative of other things that were going on. Fortunately for us, our problem was a very small, light-hearted problem that we could make fun of. The example of the patty in terms of resolving the issue and um, having a successful thing speaks more to the culture than it does to the food. I think um, the, the culture is one where there tends to be a lot of um, resistance put forward to things that we think are foolish or unfair or don't make a lot of sense. And we are quick to pick up a cause and also we're quick to try to fight for the underdog, which quite often is ourselves. Do I think it was blown out of proportion? No, not really. I think without that publicity, no, we wouldn't have had a successful conclusion as quickly as we did. Once we had gotten a successful conclusion to the name of the patty and we agreed on the name Jamaican Patty, we had a celebration on February 23rd, 1985 at the store. So it was a day in which we invited everybody to come down and um, celebrate with us. And so, victory for the Jamaican Patty. Victory for the Jamaican community and victory for multiculturalism here in Toronto. Reporting live from Kensington Paddy Palace, for City Pulse News, I'm Colin Vaughan. Welcome to Kensington Paddy Palace. What would you like today? One beef patty, please. Coming right up. Thanks. As a result of the patty wars, we found that the consumption of the patty started to increase because more people knew what a patty was. At the time, we only had a retail store in Kensington Market, which was where we made the product and retail it as well as did the wholesale in. So this event prompted us to move from that location to a plant in Scarborough. The irony of the story is that the product that we brought to Canada, which created all this furore, we eventually ended up being able to export back to the Caribbean. Because as our business grew, we looked at different markets and we ended up meeting people who wanted to buy patties to sell in the islands in the Caribbean. So the patty has come full circle.